Can you guys see what I see? This is the editor that I use. <clears throat> yeah, so this is probably close to eight, maybe nine hours of work from start to finish. Yeah, eight to nine hours of work, what you guys were able to, to play. I'm going for web games. I think web games are the future. Especially if you can get them to look pretty high fidelity. I don't see why people would buy console. So there's no objective yet. So uh, the, f the first day I worked on the character design, I think I spent about an hour making him and making the low res version and all this stuff. Uh, and then I put him into the engine. And then um, day two was just, yeah, building the engine and the scene and building all the pieces. And then day three, three i was programming it so that there's movement and animation depending on you know what you call it how you move Ooh, scary so yeah you can walk around it's kind of like old 90s style graphics but that's still kind of impressive just out of the browser in my opinion right i think people will get over it you know, like, cause that's it. You don't have to have a, any kind of computer. You can actually play this game on your phone. Like if you go to your phone, you can play this too. I haven't made touch controls, so it's not compatible yet with that. That would be, that's going to be, um, <coughs> um, that's going to be some, uh, towards the end type stuff. First, we got to make the game. So I think today I'm going to start designing the puzzles. So it's going to be a horror puzzle game. Right, so the theme right now is, is like you're this pilot that's landed on this strange island and you need to get like these energy sources to get the fuck out. And as you're traversing, it's a programmed, it's a, kind of like a board game. So you can move and then when you move, let's say there's an alien, he moves too. Or like something will pop up from the shadows. And so if you move back, then they'll leave the shadows. If you pop in, they'll come in. If you come in, they'll come closer. So like you'd be like, okay, it seems like if I keep going, <laughs> the monster's gonna be right here waiting to kill me. So maybe I need to find another way to get to this puzzle, you know? And so then you like go over here and then like maybe you can go this, this way and then like you can turn off um, some switches. I got inspired by games, um, like this is like a l literal almost rip, rip off of the game mechanics from games like uh, Hitman Go, um, two Raider go and uh, like the go games and then Deus Ex go if you haven't played them if you have a phone get those games for like a dollar each if you're gonna get one of them just get two Raider. two Raider is fucking dope I love that game and I was like what it would be cool if like this was like a third person and all that stuff and it was a little more terrifying like can you scare the shit out of somebody if they even if they knew they only had to move and the monster could only move because then you can build up this kind of, um, you can build up this, uh, you could train the player to think that that's how it's going to be and then introduce like a creature that moves two moves or one move. It's like random and it's like chasing the fuck out of you, you know? Um, or have a creature that doesn't stop moving, so it just keeps going. And you're just like, wait a minute, like, stop coming. Wait, what the? And that's something that you can't do in board games, right? Um, I, I could maybe, I don't know how I'll just have to look into it. I'm sure I can do it. I'm sure there's a way. I don't see why I, I, there wouldn't be. I'll show you with the way. Positive. There's, there's a strategy to that. That's good though, actually. Thanks for reminding me that the phone vibration. But, yeah, I've been learning lots of programming, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, but I, I feel pretty capable. I feel like I can make whatever game I want. Um, I'm, I'm pretty, especially in JavaScript, in Play Canvas and Construct 2, or Construct 3, these game engines. 
I feel incredibly competent that I can do whatever or my mind is set out to do. So let's do this. Oops, do you guys still see my screen? More fantasy with some more muscular. All right, let's do it. Questions? I had a question earlier when you were going through the um, the local values and then their respective um, shadow colors. Uh -huh. as as ambient, or, ambient, ambient occlusion is concerned. Does it bring all of them down to black? Brings all of them. All, all, all of the various uh, value colors down to black regardless of what the face is. Shadow yeah, it, it can. Yeah, because the idea of ambient occlusion is just where light cannot get in. Yeah. And so the only reason why we can see the things that we see is because of light bouncing off of stuff. Yeah. So there's no light bouncing off of like in the corner of a room or something like that, or instead of a crack of an armor. Yeah. And this is yeah. then it's gonna get closer to black. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. It's absolutely that's a uh a good assumption. Now one thing that I will tell people is that, you know, like there's a reason why art schools generally tell you not to paint black. Um Right, and it's not because of the reasons that you think, because they'll say you know like you know don't go absolutely black because you'll just mess up your painting. It's actually because uh, if you go absolutely black, like you've used up, if you use it like all the everywhere, you've used up your your black. It's a it's a bad contrast tactic, right? Let alone bad for um, aesthetics. I'm sorry. Let alone bad for like form. You know. I got you. Like, yeah. But like if you're using black uh, without without design in mind, you know, yeah, you can definitely screw up your painting both in values and in design. Make sense? Yeah. Because I use black all the time. Okay. But I use it as a design tool. I use it specifically like right now. Let me do it. Like I used to say, this is just really dark material. And then people are like, yeah, it's dark material. You know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but normally someone would be like, well, I don't know, you can't do that. I remember one time I had a teacher that said that black doesn't exist, so you shouldn't paint it. And I was like, wait, so then what the fuck's black? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? You know? Yeah. I'm like, black does exist, you dummy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I'm looking at it, like, you're telling me not to paint black. So what do you mean it doesn't exist? <laughs> You know, you're just telling me. It's like he, I know what he meant though. He was trying to say, like, it's just too aggressive, right? I was yeah, like, no, I but, but we have black. Like, what is this color right here on my monitor then? What is that color? Explain <laughs> that to me. <laughs> I don't see anything. Yeah, there's no color there. Yeah, it's just funny. Um, yeah, I got you as far as ambient occlusion is concerned. Perfect. Hey, AJ. Hey, what's up? So um, I have a question about uh, like routines. I was hoping uh -huh. you could help me put together uh, like a training schedule because uh, I feel like when I do uh, draw, it's always character design. You know what I mean? I'm always doing the same thing. I'm not putting enough time to study. I was hoping you could help me okay. do some exercises and uh, get a routine going. Because, you know, I feel like I'm pretty driven. I just lack the guidance, you know? Sure. That's why I was considering going to school for a while. And that's why, you know, I'm taking the mentorship with you. It's because so, I need sort of guidance. Yeah, so so this is what you got to do. Like, write down a list of all the things you need to get better at. So right. let's talk about it. What is, what is What are some of the things that you should get better at? Um, I can think of, like, the most basic things, like, uh, like facial thing, like drawing faces and um, like the head anatomy. Okay, so let's just stop there. Okay. Um, so starting today, you're going to do between uh, five to ten pages of and full pages, like Kim Jong Ji type pages uh, of faces. Mm -hmm. And you're going to do that for about a week or two, and that's it. So yeah, but you see, I feel like I'll 
No nope. benefit more by nope. varying it. Stop. You know what I mean? Nope. That's how you do it. Isolation studies is the best way to do it. It really is. Because if you do the other way, you're not, you're not allowing your brain to really retain information as effectively as if you just isolate one problem at a time. You understand me? Yeah. Like when I learned programming, I wasn't like, well, I better learn, you know, math, programming, coding, logic, algorithms, all that. Because those are all things I should learn and I need to learn, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, how do I make a box? And I didn't stop until I knew everything there was about making a box. You understand? Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, I got this box show I walked down. All right, let's, let's move on. So now how do I move this box? And I did everything in my power to know exactly how to move that box. You understand? And I can demonstrate it. I can show you. See, that's the thing, man. Like people don't realize it. Like it's not that it's challenging to be a great artist. It's just boring. <laughs> okay. It's incredibly boring. But look at all these things that I've done. Right. And I have, I have a thing, uh, just a, a level that's literally just made to practice. It's called testing grounds. I had the little test dummy and everything. You see that? Yeah. Right. And in here I went and just went like, I tried all this stuff and stuff. And now I feel so confident that I'm making all these different uh, tools. Well, here, let's, why don't we just do this? Why don't we add a new scene? Demo. Okay. So we're in the scene. <coughs> There's a box there, right? So the first day I was just like, how do I make a box? And I, it was pretty easy. You know, I was oh, you just go here and make a box. Okay. There's another box there. And then I'm like, all right, you can rotate it. You can do this stuff so you can orient it and do all these kinds of things. You can scale it, you know? And I was like, okay, I feel pretty confident now that I know how to navigate this. But when I first started learning 3D programs, this is the kind of stuff that I did a lot. When I was learning Blender, I was learning, doing this a lot, okay? Like, can I just do some basic shit? And how do I do it, you know? So navigation get, is usually pretty quick, you know? Like, you, you usually figure it out really quickly. So now let's get to, like, fundamental, like, programming, right? So I'm like, all right, how do I move this garbage? All right, so first thing I saw is you have to build a script. There's m many ways you could do this. So you could go, like, right here. You could build a script this way, right? So I can build a script right there. I can name it. I'm not going to. You can build a script by adding the component, which is you're going to do this anyways. So you, so you can go right here, and then you can do a new script right there. Same thing, right? Or you can go to the code editor, and then you can just right-click into the empty space, I believe. Or actually, no, you can go to File, New, Create Script, and then same thing. So I know, like, three different ways to make a script. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's not an accident, dude. I, like, I was like, how... Like, what's the most, what is the most effective way to make a script? Okay. And I found that the best way to do it, I mean, even though there's three different ways, right? And each one doesn't really, it's not that big of a deal. The most effective way is to actually do it here because then you've already attached it to the cube. Okay. So then I can name it, move, move cube, and it's added it, and then I can click there to edit it. That's actually the fastest way. Because the other way to do it would have been to uh, make the script right here, like I showed you before, right? And then click on the cube, then add the component, then hit the script, and then drag and drop, or actually, I'm sorry, just find it right here, and then hit the editor. Or I could just click the cube knowing that I'm going to make a unique script, right? That's going to be attached to this cube, and then just then it goes straight to the editor from there. Okay, mm -hmm. so then you see all this garbage, right? Do you know what any of this stuff means? A little bit. I took a uh, computer class back in high school. Okay, so you know a little bit, but I didn't. I had no fucking clue. <laughs> okay, as so, as soon as I got to here, right, I was like, "What the?" Okay. Yeah. I was like, "All right, well, 
I don't want to just kind of empty-mindedly try to figure this out. Let me just try to learn some basic stuff first, then I'll come back. And so hopefully this will make more sense to me, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. I think I was Code Academy. It was Code Academy. Oh, they upgraded their website. Course Slayer Nice. I need to change my name the hell so anyways um show me the skills that i've learned oh right here they changed their website that's why i'm not sure how to navigate but look learn javascript see this mm -hmm. see that bar completed whoops 100 percent 100 percent completed see that yeah so then i was like all right now i know some basic ass javascript <laughs> okay now let's come back and like now this starts i'm like oh i know how to do all kinds of shit now right i'm like, all right i get what's going on and i was like i just still don't know what a prototype is so then i started researching what a prototype was you know but I understand what this is. I'm like, oh, okay. So this is this this variable is creating a play canvas script named move cube. So this cannot be deleted. This is the hard code that lets the actual engine know that there's a script called move cube. This actually doesn't need to be in this actual script. You can move this code and put it in a different one if you'd like, right? Um but that's kind of non-intuitive, just keep it where it, where it deserves to be, right? And so then I was like, all right, so let's figure this shit out. So DT I learned was delta time and all this stuff. So then I was like, all right, let's just move this, this entity dot uh, translate local, and let's move it on the Y axis so it's gonna go up, okay? And let's do like a small value so it doesn't go up rapidly. And so then I was like, all right, so now, if I should launch this again, it should go up. Ah, oh, see, too fast. <laughs> and I re realize you can do DT, so then it will goes by the based on the frame rate of people's computers. So then we can increase the value. I'm like, oh shit, son! <laughs> now we're in business. I was like, all right, but clearly it's never going to stop. Um, that's not ideal. So then I went online, I read, and I, was, I looked at the API that they have, and so you have to make an if statement. So basically, if I press a button, then do this thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so then I just started doing that. I'm not going to get too much into this code because it's just not important. Hopefully, you can understand the premise of what I'm trying to teach you here. Yeah, you're saying that you should focus on one thing. I, yeah. And I literally would just sit on this and I would move it, rotate it. Like I was like, how can I do it? a lot of these things? I had to learn what Euler angles are. You know what Euler angles are? No. Yeah. Well, you would have to learn them if you want to be more accurate with your rotations. Okay. I have scoured their forums relentlessly and their website relentlessly for information that I needed to obtain. <laughs> and I can prove it to you. I was just thinking of it as more of like training at the gym, hitting different muscle groups every day of the week. You know what I mean? Yeah, as, but you um, have to think about it like this. Um, when you train your muscles, your muscles only have one function, right? So when you're focusing on like their biceps, mm -hmm. um, like for a whole day, then yeah, your biceps are going to be sore the next day. You need to let them rest, right? Your brain is like the opposite. If you have multiple things going on at the same time or even spread it out, it's harder for your brain to retain any real information because your brain is in the business of energy, energy efficiency. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't see a, a, a correlation to what you're trying to learn, then it will ignore it. It will literally pass through your mind. You must have experienced this. You had to, right? Where you, you try to learn something like several different things and you hardly remember any of those things. 
Right. right? So how do you remember things? How do you compound that memory? Well, you have to convince your mind that it's important and we're not leaving until we understand it. And so we can still hit the muscle groups differently, but we have to give it more time. You can work out a bicep in one hour and it will be exhausted and it won't need, you can't do it the next day. That's absolutely true. But I'm saying that one hour might actually look like days or even weeks to work out the bicep. Gotcha. of like foundational stuff mm -hmm. because it's way more complex. There's a lot more things that need to be there. You need to cement memories. Okay. And so, and so I'm trying to tell you, and, and it's not just my opinion. This has been scientifically proven that the best way of learning is f focused isolation learning. Like pick a thing and don't leave until you understand it. And not entirely. You don't have to understand it entirely. Just understand it more than you did before right? Where you feel like you're competent enough to move on to the next thing. Okay. Because right. just like the muscles, like that's a great analogy, right? Like you come back, you know, just because you worked out your bicep that one week doesn't now mean you can lift 20 pounds more, right? You have to keep at it. You mm -hmm. have to keep cycling around, but you're definitely going to be stronger than in the next week, you know? And the same thing, like after, you know, training, you know, anatomy or whatever, like specifically the face anatomy, like a week or two you're going to feel, feel way more confident and then you're going to move on to the study of the arms or maybe you're going to work work on forms right but then eventually and then you move back to and then you'll see that your head is starting to look a little fishy and then you go right back to the head yeah exactly right so, um so what, what would, how much like time do you think i should two weeks for each sort of subject that well that's that's the most i think people need to do i don't think you need to spend more because then then it gets it becomes really overwhelming, right? Like, or you, you'll get bored rather, right? So I actually think somewhere between like a week and two weeks is perfectly fine. And if you feel like you haven't learned much still after two weeks, which I highly doubt, I incredibly doubt, right? Yeah. Um, you should still just move on to something else, okay? okay. But um, if you wanted something rigid, that's a rigid thing. And like I said, it's, it's just, um, it's really really clear when you're working with the brain because the brain is a different kind of muscle okay and so when you're doing this like focus practice you'll see <laughs> yeah being a good artist is not hard it's just boring yeah it's just really it's really incredibly boring that's why people don't do it like you know people expect montages you know Right, right like so like the rocky montage where you're just like running and then you're punching some meat and you're just terrible at it for at first and then you know five minutes later you're like running sprinting up the stairs and punching holes through meat you know <laughs> but even in rocky that took him six months it's just they they just didn't want to show it because it's that would be an incredibly boring movie if you had to come back every day for six months to watch him train <laughs> before he fought apollo creed could you imagine if that movie did that but that's accurate. That's exactly what happened. Um, yeah. Just one last thing before I go. Um, can you give me some some ideas of what else I could study? Like I've been uh, I've been trying to do some master studies, like drawings from um, oh. what what's his name? Paul P Peter Paul Rubin is that his name? Oh, I don't know. But yeah. Um, well, uh, no. Like getting back to the we we already kind of figured it out, right? We already like you need to do focus on face. Right, so what you need to do is deconstruct the face. You need to, to understand the planal structures of the face. Like you need to learn the names of the muscle groups and the bones in the face, right? Like by name, okay? That's incredibly helpful, right? Because it, it demonstrates that you have some expertise, all right? You might not memorize them all, but you'll definitely learn them and be able to, to draw it more effectively. It's easier to draw something that you can, you have a definition for, right? Right. If you don't have any definition, then it's, it's just abstract, but there's no reason to keep it abstract. You know, art is not, uh, I mean, anatomy is not abstract. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. So, so, uh, some exercises that I would give to you for the head. Yeah. Is deconstruct, right? Uh, and then, you know, there's a testing element of it, you know what I'm talking about, where like you, you go ahead and draw like the planes of the face and you, you do all the studies and you try to take as much notes as possible so you can remember what mm -hmm. it is that you're doing. And then you test yourself. You do like a, 
like a 15 to 20 minute test of what you actually remember. Right. And remember, tests are neither supposed to be hard or easy. Okay, there's no, the test isn't supposed to be one or the other. A test is just a gauge of your skill at the moment. Yeah, okay. So a test will be hard. Uh, if a test is hard, that represents that you don't know as much as you thought you did. Uh, and if a test is easy or easier, that means you've, you've learned something, you know? That's all that means. So if you get upset that your tests are challenging um, and you take it a personal, you're, you're wrong. It just means you didn't study effectively. You need to try again. Gotcha. This is why focused study is better because you're allowing your brain to only receive information about that one subject matter. Make sense? Yep. And your brain will be like, all right, I guess this is serious. Let's start paying attention, you know? And if all you're doing is like eating, sleeping, like head anatomy, you're going to get better at it dramatically faster than if you spread it out. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. And this is, this is the same reason why when I work out, I do isolation workouts. Like when I go do back day, I pretty much do only pull-ups and deadlifts, just those two. And I just do freaking hundreds of them. Like a lot of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just do tons until I'm like extremely exhausted. And uh -huh. sure enough, um, uh, I got really strong. I was, I was deadlifting nearly 400 pounds and wow. I was like, not anymore. And I was before, That's impressive. yeah, before my surgery. And then I was also, um, doing pull-ups, uh, at least 20 to 25 pull-ups without stopping, uh, wow. effortlessly. Well, the first 15 were effortless. <laughs> yeah. And, and like the last 10 are, are a little bit more of a struggle, but I was able to do 25 consistently. Uh, with chin over the bar That's and, cool. and wow, it's, it was simple man i just i i didn't i kept it really simple focus on the compound movements and just strengthen that you know right and then i would have uh <coughs> arm days and i would just focus on uh, bicep curls dips and um uh, overhead presses right because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the arm muscles are much smaller so they can recover much faster Right. right and sometimes i'll do two arm days because again for the same reason i just said you know i might try to do that in my workouts the isolation thing yeah again like it's because it, you're just really like trust me if you want to do like for instance the pull-ups and the uh if you want to try the pull-ups and the deadlifts one all i did was i did um i did 10 sets of deadlifts heavy deadlifts of five so I'll do like, so basically about 50 deadlifts and mm -hmm. obviously I'll start lowering the weight because I can't keep that going. You know, like if I started with like, um, Oh, so you started heavy and then yeah, I started with like close to like 300 maybe. I think it was 275 at the time and I'll just do five. Right. And then I put it down and I do five again and then I put it down and I barely would do five on like the third set, you know? And so then I'm like, all right, I need to like take off some weight. So sometimes I take off a lot of weight. Like I'll take like 25 plate off. Right. right. And then I'll do it again for like five, but I'll be able to do like, you know, three more sets and then I'll get tired again and then I'll just mm -hmm. drop them, you know, and I'll try to go for 10 sets, you know? Yeah. And then, scary though. especially yeah. when you go heavy like that. Well, that, that at the time that was not as heavy because my max was 400. Right. Yeah. And so, so I never do my max. I only do it like every month or so just to see yeah. how strong I am. Okay. right and and usually when i do my max i try to do at least three so i was lifting 400 pounds three times and it, you're right it's absolutely terrifying <laughs> okay and then uh with pull-ups i would do 100 pull-ups okay. just just do it until i was done doing 100 pull-ups so even like towards like 75 pull-ups i would just do one pull-up and just drop to the floor and i just do that for 25 times <laughs> you know it's yeah. incredibly hard. And if, uh, if you've never done that before, I would highly recommend not doing 10 sets. Uh, I would say do five. And I would not recommend 100. I would recommend 50. And uh, you'll, feel, you'll be fucking wrecked. <laughs> okay? And, and it's only two workouts. You understand? Like, it's only two workouts. Right, right. And yeah. it's incredibly challenging. It's, you'll, be, you'll be sore for days. And, uh, and that's the only workout regiment that actually makes my lats sore like i rarely get my lats sore 
that one that definitely does yeah for lats you really need to put in the reps yeah uh, I'll, I'll give that a try and let you know how it goes yeah you'll see what i'm talking about you're like geez and it's really simple, man. Like, and, and because I looked at all the, the weight lifting programs and training and it became clear to me that you just got to just do more than your body can handle often. Yeah. And, and so going back to the art stuff though, like just kind of keep it rel- uh, related, you know, that's the same idea, man. Like I just say, okay, I don't know how to move an object in this code. So I'm going to spend all day today tomorrow the next day you know until i get it like i'm not leaving until i understand this you know even at a very basic level like even if it's just like more than just like like i don't want to i don't want to have an expertise i just want to at least know more than like nothing you know I, i i don't get it like why does it work in this situation but it doesn't work in that situation you know like that would happen to me a lot i'm like why is it how come when i coded this way it's like works but then when i coded this way it's fucking falls apart the thing the thing that i struggle with with art though is um there's some <coughs> really know how to study you know what i mean like with the gym it's easy because i have people that go with me and they teach me exercises and stuff but like for example in art if i wanted to learn how to paint a good background or um make it match the uh the, the focal point you know what i mean and things uh-huh. like that i don't know how to um train myself to do that you know i don't know the exercise well well you're right like so you have to surround yourself uh with people who right. can help you that's exactly right and that's what i did too I, I surrounded myself with people um and i went online religiously finding the right kinds of sources to help me learn the things that i wanted to learn yeah. so you're absolutely right you need to surround yourself and educate yourself uh, but I mean, I don't feel too bad for you because there's an ungodly amount of resources right, online. There's just so much, dude. Mm-hmm. Like I learned JavaScript and programming and all that stuff without a, a, a direct mentor. I have a lot of indirect mentors, right? People that have no clue that I like fucking been watching them from the <laughs> from the gallows. You know yeah. what I mean? Like stalking them. Um, but. Uh, I haven't, I've only had direct contact with one or two of them. All right. Well, thanks, AJ. Appreciate it. Yeah. So I'd say like, let's start with that. And you can show me what you've done. You okay. can show me your studies and we can talk about it. Sure. And then once you start feeling comfortable, like I said, it can, it can be between, between a week or two weeks. Uh, if you do less, like if I would say like a couple of days of real practice is, is good enough too. But like it could just be a day, you know, like if you feel like you've learned a lot, then it could, yeah, it could just easily be a day. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, that's where I'm at nowadays, like with art, like it only takes me a day to really learn like a new kind of thing. Not at like an expertise level, but enough where I feel competent to move forward. Mm-hmm. But that's because I have a stronger foundation, right? I have like a lot of other stuff built on top of it. Mm-hmm. And so it's much easier. But in the beginning, it was not like that. Like I, I remember when I, I was told that I needed to practice anatomy like constantly. And it was only until like one of my favorite artists is like, yeah, you need to practice your anatomy. And I was like, what? I think I need to practice my anatomy. (laughs) And I literally for two weeks straight filled up two sketchbooks full of anatomy drawings. Okay. And then, and I got so much better anatomy, like incredibly better. Right. But I stayed focused. I just filled them up. I just like looked at Bridgman, you know, I looked at, uh, what you call it? Um, Loomis. Loomis. Yeah. Loomis. Uh, Kevin Chen, um, who are some other popular ones? This is my mind. But like there was a uh, one um, book that I had, it was Anatomy for an Artist. I studied the shit out of that. <coughs> you know? Okay. And so, good. yeah, and I don't have any of those sketchbooks, at least I don't. Th- I think I found one in storage, which was really fascinating, but it wasn't that old. Like I had ones that are really old, you know? Um, and I remember like looking through them a long time ago and I was just like, wow, I did like, I practiced so much. In fact, you know, whenever we would go hang out at sketch groups and then people would be sharing their sketchbooks, right? I was always kind of embarrassed showing my sketchbook because it was always just full of garbage. Like there was, I didn't have like a fully drawn thing in it. You know, there's nothing ever like just a drawing. You understand? It was just lots of sketches and studies. 
and so i remember like when people look at it too they'll just be like oh this is cool you know just being polite and i'm like dude it's not good at all like you're just being polite in my head i'm thinking this you know and um and uh but now i you know with some reflectiveness and some hi- hindsight right i can see what i what was going on is because uh at the time I, I that was not my focus my focus wasn't to try to have an impressive looking sketchbook my focus was to be an impressive artist right when it comes to game time that's where i'm at that, that's what matters to me I, don't, I can care less if my sketches look good you know mm-hmm. uh, if my um if my paintings are garbage <laughs> you know that was the way that i felt about it just like i don't care if my um my my coding uh sketches are garbage right like i have some really bad code in some places um but if my principal ideas of coding are strengthened right now i bought a how to do calculus for dummies so that's one big thing that i'm going to start reading you know um once i've uh i've allotted some time sometime in april to just read that whole book you know and learn from it and so then i can come back even smarter i need to get one for linear algebra too start getting these equations people who have already discovered how to to you know uh illustrate the world or visualize the world and how it works and there's no reason for me to reinvent that you know just like when people already know how to do lighting and anatomy and design and also there's no real reason for me to reinvent these things i just gotta like pick up from where they left off and then go from there mm-hmm. so but yeah don't um don't just stay stay put but that was a good analogy to think about as like you know working out different muscle groups <coughs> i think you're right i think just the timeline's different it's not like a, you can do it in a day okay okay appreciate it thank you yeah any other questions hey man hey what's up can you explain me? Nope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, bye. <laughs> See you later. See ya. Can I'm you just... explain me, um, like the other program that you have uh, about with the Discord group, um, what you talk about projects? Oh yeah. So my club, my club has pretty much been pretty stale. I haven't done workshops in a long time just mm-hmm. because uh, I haven't found the time to. And, yeah. and I think I ran out, ran dry of stuff to talk about. So uh, one of the things I'm going to start doing, and I was, I was going to actually start doing critiques, but uh, that's also very challenging to do. Uh, but I think that's what I'm going to have to do. But as on its face value, you just get all my video tutorials. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's that's pretty much the the most value you get right now is you get all yeah. my video tutorials. Uh, some people just pay for the lifetime and then they'll just have access to all my video tutorials forever. Yeah, you know? that's what I thought of doing. Yeah, because I I still make them. I do like seasonal type stuff where I'll take like a couple months off and then I'll work for like a month and I make a lot of tutorials. I I teach a lot, and every time I teach, I get smarter. And every time I yeah. get smarter, I have more things to talk about. And I teach, and sometimes I learn new programs. So like probably in about a year. Um, especially in the, like, I'm almost certain about it. I'm going to be able to teach people how to make video games, you know, All but right. one of the things that I want to do before that, because the one thing that I, I think brings my tutorials a lot of value is that I am also very credible, you know, like I've done it. And so yeah, I need sure. to like get jobs doing it and I need to like make a game that's made some money or is at least popular. It doesn't need to make money. It can just be popular. Right. And, uh, and then I'll increase my credibility and then I can sell my uh, tutorials on how to make games you know uh, i'm not yeah. trying to say that if you you can't do that unless you have some credibility there's plenty of great educators that may have never made a game yeah. in their life that yeah, i've watched almost. and they're great they're great they're really good um, but i feel like there's some added like insight if i'm like not only teaching you how to do some basic stuff but i'm also like but keep this in mind because when you actually make a real game this is an actual challenge and this is like an actual problem instead of speculative, oh. right? Because yep. a lot of the tutorials that I watch, they're really good because they just teach you how to make things move and work, you know? 
Yeah. But that's not enough. You need you need some more like high level insight, in my opinion, to understand yeah, sure. why you should be doing it this way. Why it's a good game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. So we yeah, have right now is for the tutorials. Yeah. Enough, yeah, I think I still do the projects. I put them out there, but I have to like put some effort. You know what I think I might do actually is I have someone I, uh, who helps me run my emails. I think what I can do is have them run the, the Discord and make it more active. I think that's what I'm going to have to do because it's like a full-time job to run the community. And I think it's time for sure. me to take it seriously and uh, build the community uh, rapidly. And so yeah. because people really want to find other artists that they can hang out with. I think that's really, yeah, definitely. I think definitely. that's really valuable. Yeah, when I saw that video, I said, I'm getting in for sure. Like, I, I'm interested in the fact, like, having a classroom and like this, but even more relaxed. Yeah, I think... Like, uh, like this Q&A, but let's, teach, let's learn blah, 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 you know? Yeah, there's, um, there's already a Discord that's available if you want access to it. I'll yep. send it to you. But I, don't, I think it's people stopped going to it and i think that's the problem like unless sure. like big names are there people don't really engage often i don't know why like if there was a discord back when i was a student man i would have used the fuck out of it man you know <laughs> it's, just, it's just how people are man some people just they, they want someone else to to lead them you know sure and it's unfortunate and so i always encourage people to become their own leaders and i have some students who have you know who become great leaders in their communities and I'm like, yes, this is exactly right. Sure. Yeah. What what I what I look for also is um, someone awesome. that I can really learn from. You know, because you can you can learn from your peers, of course. Uh -huh. But to to give you actual someone that can give you actual answers that can speed your process. You know what I mean? Like yeah, absolutely. Like you like you or. I I also take mentorship with Atei Galan, guy from cool. Riot Games. So yeah, that guy, you know, he gives me different insights Absolutely. that maybe maybe someone that is on my own level can't. Yeah, I'd yeah. still say that you should take that uh, from your peers more seriously, because sure. when I was in school, that's all I had. Uh, there was very few workshops and whatever, and there was no mentorships of any kind, right? right. So we, we only could rely on each other's feedback um, for most of the time, right? And, um, yeah. and that was really valuable to me, man. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah, I, I would say that you're not wrong. You know, there's a lot of intrinsic value from, you know, having people that are in the field. Like, that was going back to my point about credibility. Yeah. But, like, like, let me give you a perspective. I don't have a mentor teaching me how to program. No. I don't have, like, somebody I'm taking a class from, and they're, like, giving me all. I'm just doing it on my own. You understand? I didn't yeah. have anybody teach me Blender. I just did it. I learned it. And so that it's, it's entirely possible to have indirect mentors, people that you can just learn from afar. You don't sure. have to actually meet them or talk to them. Yeah. Um, and then also... Um, having peers, having pe I, I show the stuff to people and then they give me feedback. That's the best thing I can do, you know? Sure. Like work with the resources you have access to. You can't take my class every month, right? It's, I don't think it's affordable for you. No, you know? sure. I, 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 I destroy YouTube with tutorials. <laughs> okay, <good. laughs> you know, right, just making sure that was clear. Yeah, like I don't disagree with you, man. I think it's, there's a lot I of mean, value getting sources like you know the, like myself and the other artists you mentioned right like that's yeah, absolutely I know what you right mean. i know what you mean because i done i've done it also with web design and web development also like i i done it myself with youtube that's enough i think mm -hmm. you know it's the same i know what absolutely. you mean but what i what i what i maybe lack with with drawing it's the same principle, but what I like with I like with drawing is, um, like a good routine and a, re a good regime, 
I know some someone on my back telling me like asking Absolutely. me for stuff, you know. Yeah, that's incredibly Just, helpful too. That's it. That's I it. Agree. You telling me okay for for Tuesday, give me twenty five uh, sketches. For some reason, I execute better than if I tell it to myself. And that's it. Yeah, because you have um, accountability. Because if you don't, I'm gonna be mad at you. Right. <laughs> if you do it for yourself, yeah, you're, you're gonna have nobody mad at you. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I understand that. Yeah, I'm not critical of that. I so get yeah, it. I basically I'm looking for people all the time in on the internet that <laughs> that I can pay so I can so they can tell me so they can whip you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. No, I, I understand. I feel the same way. Like right now, um, uh, it's really hard for me to like stay disciplined with uh, game design because I have other yeah. stuff, responsibilities and stuff like that. But like yeah. I do it. I don't care. I still do it because I remember I was talking about doubling down. Like I'm like, it's because I'm bad at it. And so I'm like, yeah, I sure. just got to do it. And um, that's like the, the one talent that I might actually have that I always tell people if there was any kind of advantage is that I don't, um feel uh i don't feel s- stupid for being bad like not even a little bit sure right like i whenever i have conversations with people and th- they'll say stuff like uh, oh well, you know i'm still working on it and like this and that or like you know like uh this is this and you know i this is just a sketch or i'm just still a student or like this so very there's a lot of insecurity and it's justified yeah. in a lot of ways I'm usually like, yeah, this is cool, man. This is the best I got. What do you think? And they're like, oh, this is garbage. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I, I've done it before where I understand why people say that. Like whenever I talk to my friends who are not artists and they talk about all kinds of different things, like it's just, it's pretty impressive like how, how often this happens and how people will just immediately, immediately um come up with a reason why they're not good at something instead of just saying i'm just not good at it right yeah. and i i used to be the same way um but i just came i got over it much faster than most people i think and then yeah. and i think that's what helps me learn faster because i'm just completely aware that it's not a personal thing you know sure like yeah, i yeah. should i shouldn't take it so personal that i suck like it's just just literally just because i can't do it because i haven't practiced it like I see it in my kids all the time. They always were just like, oh, I can't do this because of this. And I'm like, like why? Like, it starts young. Like, it's in our bones. <laughs> okay? And so you just got to overcome it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, so can I ask you, like, can I tell you what my plan is for this year in terms of, like, how I, I will invest in my education? Yeah, go for it. If it's okay or not. Yeah, go for it. So, uh, hold on just a this, second, actually. Before uh, I need to make sure that someone's picking up my kid. My friend, she's been picking up our kid, but yeah, I need yeah. to double check. Yeah, man. Go for it. All right. Go for it. What's your plans for world domination? <laughs> All right. Is after this, so after these two weeks, I'm going to, I'm already paying, as I told you, this guy at Tegalan. Mm hmm. That, and he gives me like I, uh, he gives me a paint over every month of one image, whatever I want. And then I'm gonna pay another guy that is called Modern Day James on Patreon, all on Patreon. Uh-huh. This guy is pretty good. Like he's pretty good teaching you how to dissect the topics that you wanna learn. Cool. I don't know. And he has he has classrooms and stuff, and yeah, it's basically like it's four four classes, four sessions per month, thirty thirty bucks. So it's nothing. It's pretty cheap. And yeah, I'm gonna go with that, and still do exercise on my own of whatever I'm lacking. And then maybe then maybe pay a course in CGMA Academy. Cool. Cool. 
That sounds cool to me, man. Yep. Yeah, you got to do what That's you got to do, man. It all sounds like a great plan. Good. Just like I was telling Eric earlier, like, there is no shortage of resources. There's plenty yeah, yeah. of great educators out there that will teach yeah. you a lot of what you know. Like, when I was learning, when I was getting better, <coughs> uh, I learned from a lot of people, man. You know, and I was talking to somebody about it back when the gum roads were first coming out and stuff like that. And they were like, aren't you afraid that people are going to like steal this and like go run with it? And, you know, now there's like tutorials everywhere, right? And there's like mentorships all around the world now from all sorts of people. You know, yeah. I was one of the very few who did it. I was, and I was the most popular one because I was uh, someone in the industry that people recognized. Right, some of these sure. other people they might have not recognized their work outside of their actual teaching, right? Yeah. But I yeah, was yeah, like yeah. this industry professional who was teaching. That was that was the catch, right? And yep. and I was pretty good at it. And and so you know, people will tell me like, "Aren't you afraid that people are going to jack your your shit?" Like start teaching creature and character design classes too. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm sure it's gonna <laughs> happen." Like. Like you, you act like, like this is never like I'm never gonna have competition. And I was like, that's always gonna be the case. So I just got to do a better job of trying to be more relevant. But I was like, but more importantly, kind of to the point I was making earlier, is that, you know, when I was in school, it wasn't like I watched one Noman DVD and I was like, all right, I got everything I ever needed to know about concept art. No need to go to workshops. No need to go listen to any other lectures. Listen, watch any video. You know, what's this, YouTube? Nope, don't need to go there. I've learned everything from this one video tutorial from this one artist. <laughs> and, I was like, and they're like, oh yeah, that kind of, that's stupid. And I was like, yeah, exactly, right? Like, that sounds stupid because it is stupid. Like, nobody, nobody thinks this way, you know? Like, yeah. you, you watch my video tutorial, you get educated, you'll, you'll learn a thing or two. But then you'll see someone like that you also admire do a video tutorial. You're going to watch what they have to say, right? Yep. And they're not. And yeah, most sure. times you're not going to be like, well, AJ was better or so-and-so was better than AJ. It's usually just like they're both good and they're both, were, they're, they're both different and they're both informative in different ways, yep. you know? And, I, and I, I explained too, like that's how you get style because you listen to what I say about values, but maybe you don't agree with me on colors, right? And then yeah. you talk to like Mike Azevedo and you're like, I like the way he talks about colors, but not maybe how he does values, you know? Yeah. I like the stylization of, you know, Jeff Turley, but I don't like his, his um, lack of rendering, you know? Sure. And then, and then it's not that you, you think either, again, any of these artists are bad or worse. You just pick the things you like about them and you focus on it. And then that's yeah. when you end up becoming the artist that you prefer. You want to be. Sure. Yeah. Like I'm clearly a, 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 a hodgepodge of all my favorite artists, you know, and then I've, I have so many different favorite artists. I study from under so many different artists that my artwork looks like Anthony Jones now. Right. Did you, did you copy a lot of artwork, artwork Absolutely. from them? Yeah, yeah, in the beginning. Only one one or two, and then I realized that if they didn't draw like a boot, then I didn't know how to draw a boot. That was the problem. Sure. And so I had to like branch out and I had to learn fundamental ideas so that way I could be better. Yeah. And that worked out pretty good. Good, man. Thank cool. you. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions? I'll take one more. I'm going to roll out after this. All right, we'll just end the class right now then. So uh, before I go, I'm going to be leaving to Texas uh, because we just bought a house and I need to go check it out. But I should be able to still have the class at the same time and everything. There should be no difference. I'll bring my laptop. Maybe the audio might be a little bit different because I'll be using like my headset instead of my nice E2 2020 Audio Technica mic, you know, like my nice like $100 mic. Um, I'll be using like my $30 or $20 bargain mic that I got from Amazon. And um, 
But I'm going to go there. We're going to check out the house and see the grandparents. And so then uh, it should be good. It should be good. And, but the, we should have internet there. I think the first, you guys won't experience it. You guys will, the, the first class of next week will be, uh, I'll be at home. Cause I, I'll leave right after class that day to Texas. We're going to take the car. And then uh, on Thursday, you'll have me talking to you guys from the comfort of the home. All right. But nothing, nothing should change. You guys, everything should still be on schedule. You guys should still submit. You guys should still work effectively. All right. Uh, hello. Yeah, I can hear you. I was just talking over you because I wasn't oh, done sorry. talking. I'm just sorry. kidding. <laughs> I'm struggling with my sound here. Uh, my power chipped and everything's gone all weird. Oh, no. Um, so I was just wondering uh, when your next environment course is going to start and who lectures it. Oh, you got to talk to Kalen. So I don't manage that. That's Kalen. So you just go to Facebook, type in Kalen Chalk and try to message him or just try to find his work on ArtStation and message him there. Kalen Chalk. Yeah, I just wrote it into the chat, so copy that right oh, now. Cool, cool. Thank you. Yeah, he, he responds pretty quickly. He's pretty, but he, he's busy getting married, so I think that's why he hasn't had a class. <laughs> okay, it sounds but pretty maybe important. After, yeah, maybe after he gets married and like a couple months after that, I'm sure he'll, he'll bring him back. Sorry, just before you said uh, you wanted to end right now, I just had one quick question. Oh would you? Oh my God. Sorry, would you can would you think that it would be good to start off at um, like conventions, having tables and stuff, even as a sure. smaller artist? To yeah, get absolutely. Attention. Yeah, I've seen lots of small artists do that. That's a great idea. It's just expensive. So if you have the yeah. capital to do so, I, I don't see a problem there. Okay, cool. So I yeah. was just kind of worried getting into it when I'm not all that great. <laughs> no, I've seen some people who are uh, mediocre, you know, hold tables. I don't judge them for it. I just, it's just the fact that I think you should know. And so I'm sure you've seen it too if you went, right? Mm. I think there's obviously more value if you, you have more credibility or also you just have better work to, to sell. Mm. But... Um, most of these events are artist driven. So sometimes if, you know, the right kind of person will walk by and sees your stuff, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll hire you. So yeah. It's, it's like a two year plan for me, not like right now. But yeah. I'll... It's not a bad strategy. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's not reserved just for badasses. I think it's harder to get into the bigger events unless you're, unless you're not a badass. Like if you're not a badass, then it's much harder to get to like the big ones, but some of the smaller ones are usually easier to get into. They just want your money. So if you give them like 200, $300 for a table, you know, or sometimes they're cheaper. I don't know. Um, yeah, you can get a table, do whatever you want with it. So keep that in mind. All right. Now I'm rolling out. Peace out friends. Peace out. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.